Hi and welcome. My name is Wayne Hussey and I will be your guide for this video. When we created our IronSpeed application, we told it the database to connect to and the tables and views we wanted to include into our application. By default, IronSpeed creates a number of pages for us. At that time, we had the opportunity to choose what those pages were. Please note, if you do not have a primary key in your tables, then IronSpeed will not create a add or an edit page for those tables. What I mean by that is that if we go into the application explorer, and if we were to be, let's say, looking at the application folder, and we didn't have an add application page or we didn't have an edit application page, that would tell us that we probably don't have a primary key set in the table in our database. No worries. Just go into your database and set a primary key. Once you've done that, then go up to databases, scan database schema for changes. Once that's done and it saw the change that you had made in your database, accept all the changes, and then you can create an add and edit page for your application. So let's continue. Um, we'll go to the Tools tab, Page Properties. In Page Properties, you can see there's a page title, page header, menu, page footer, and we can select any of these items and browse to them or change things. There's also a job openings table control for our page. We can see here that the job opening title is job openings. Maybe I want to change that to job opening. So in one fell swoop we have that completed and it's changed on the page. It is a very good idea for you to go in and check all the different attributes and values of buttons and as you can see you can go in and you could you could change the delete button name uh, the edit button name maybe you want a different image for the edit button you can make all those changes from within here so just go in and play around and and get familiar with all the different pieces And depending on where you're at and what you've clicked on in, in this table control allows you to do different things here on these tabs where you may be able to set the bindings or maybe you'll be able to change the query or add a query. Or you can set the security on all these different value options. The attribute tab if you've done any work in Visual Studio and you look at the page properties that it has and you set all your attribute changes, your font colors and font size and things like that, this is what the attributes tab is for. Any changes that you could make in Visual Studio and the page properties, you could set them here. So let's continue. Next is Application Wizard. At the beginning of the video I talked about if a person didn't set a primary key in their database. Well let's say that happened and um, now you have it set and you need to create that add page or the edit page. Well you can come into this wizard and you could set an add record and an edit record. Then come over to your table that you want the add and edit record created from. And now it'll create an add record and an edit record in this application folder. I'm not going to do that now, but all you would have to do is click finish and it would do that for you. And it would recompile the application and open it up in a browser. So let's continue.
Next is application generation options. Iron Speed has taken a lot of time and effort to create a very nice layout wizard. From this layout wizard we can change many pieces of, of the page and pages. For instance, if we drill down into this data display of show records, we could tell Iron Speed to maybe I don't want the show record label on the side. Maybe I want it on the top. So in two clicks, I've been able to change that setting. There's many different items that you can change from within this wizard. I highly recommend that you just go through each one of them and play with it and, and get a really good understanding of, of what you can do from within this wizard. Let's continue to the configure menu. The configure menu, as you can see, is in the menu panel and it's the menu.sitemap, which is what we're looking at. Please take a few moments and, and read the comments on how to use the menu.sitemap. The first thing that I would do is if I was going to make any changes with this menu.sitemap is that I would do a control A, control C, and copy that to Notepad and I would save that as a backup file for the for the menu. And the reason for that is is that it's very easy to make a mistake in here and you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you did wrong and when that happens it's just easier to to copy your backup and paste it back in and, and start over. Let's take a look at the departments sitemap node. As you can see here, we have a left nav from our job application and it has a flyout. So we have the department link, which is sitting here, and then these would be the flyout menus here. In this case we have six flyout menus. Let's say we wanted a seventh flyout menu. Well the easiest way to create a another flyout menu would be just to copy one and paste it in. And as you can see here Let's say that we wanted the flyout to be other departments. So we would change it there. In the description, we would change it there. And then hypothetically, we would say that we had a folder called other departments with a page that we want to go to called other departments table page. Now when they click on the link they will go to that page. If we scroll a little further over to the right you can see that there's an orders number. In this orders number we can see a 30 and then a 40 for the one that I the row I copied and then the row after is 40. So I would want to make this in between those two numbers, so I'd make it 35. And then if I was using Active Directory, I could put an AD group in here that would tell the application that if I was associated to that AD group, then I could read that link. I would see it. So this is a good way of hiding menus or showing menus for specific groups. 
So let's cancel all that and continue on. The start menu. You can set your start menu for your application from here. The other way that you could set your start menu is go to your application and you can see the screen triangle. Maybe I don't want it here as my start menu. Maybe I want this one as my start menu. Oops. So all I have to do is right click on that, set a start page, and as you can see the triangle's there and now that is my start page. Application Security Wizard. The Application Security Wizard will pick up in another video where we can spend a lot more time. So that concludes this video on the Tools menu. I hope you've learned a lot and thank you for watching.